Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to this quite special painting video. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at painting some long overdue and long requested US paratrooper uniforms. In particular, their M42 uh, US paratrooper uniform. So this would be perfect for operations such as Sicily and for Operation Overlord or the D-Day landings. So the crew here from Diamond O Models were very kind to send out some sample figures for me to take a look at, as well as do some painting tutorial videos for you guys. I'll say a big thank you to the guys for sending these out to me. Um, you might have seen these featured on channels such as CW Modeling and Hamilcar Barker. So it's great to see those other fantastic modelers and painters have been doing with their figures. So I'm looking quite forward to having a go with these lovely little miniatures here. So, those of you who know me know I'm quite obsessed with the M4 Sherman, but also I'm very interested in the D-Day landings, uh, Operation Overlord. It goes right back when I was quite young, I saw The Longest Day, and then as I got older, I'm um, seeing Private Ryan band the brothers. So, anything to do with that subject matter is always a very compelling topic for me. So, I was very happy and excited to get an opportunity to paint some of their um, subject matters that were quite appropriate for Operation Overlord, including some beautiful resistance fighters, and in the case of this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at painting some US paratroopers. So just taking a quick look at some of the figure sets that were sent to me. We're just gonna take up this set here, which is very similar to the paratrooper figure that we're gonna be painting. It's from an accompanying set. So as you can see, the detail is absolutely crisp and gorgeous. I was very impressed by these. No blemishing. Uh, no bubbling or flash, everything is super crisp, super well defined, and I'm really impressed by these. Especially for a relatively new uh, company on the block when it comes to resin figures, these are absolutely gorgeous. And they're all cast in a lovely crisp grey resin, uh, there's no grease or anything. Even though, as always, just give your figures a quick scrub in warm soapy water just to remove any release agent. However, these were almost perfect out of the box, just a quick scrub. And uh, you can see here the detail is very nice on the faces as well which is um, always my go-to when checking the quality of figures as I look at the facial sculpts, and these are very nice. Again, everything is in nice, sharp contrast and detail, which is fantastic. It really helps us as painters. The more contrast in the sculpt, if you get me, or the more contrast in definition of detail, it just helps us figure out what we want to do. So this will be the paratrooper in question that we're going to be painting. So it's very much inspired by that episode in Band of Brothers with, um, I believe it's Private Webster uh, giving the Hershey bar to the young Dutch uh, child. So again, this one is going to be a little uh, kind of Normandy inspired vignette that I'm going to be working on in the future modeling with this. So in this video, we're going to be really just focusing on our paratrooper and in later videos, we're going to be looking at doing resistance fighters and some French civilians. So as always, I've pre-assembled and mounted our figure. I have painted his flesh, which I have a full tutorial on, so I'll link in the video description to that. And what I've done is I just primed the model in black primer and just given it a cynical highlight of off grey, just to give me um, an idea of how I'm going to do some shading and shadows. So I just hold the airbrush at about 85 degrees or so, just directly above the head of the model and spray downward. And wherever the light paint falls, just gives me an idea of where the shadow will go. Also, just going to quickly show you the little civilian here, the young uh, young jock here, and uh, again, beautiful little sculpt, and uh, I'm looking forward to painting up him too. It's going to be a lovely little dynamic um, scene here, especially when we add the other figures as uh, we have been uh, supplied. So, quite looking forward to working all these. So, moving on to painting the base colors. So we're gonna be working with several shades to create the base layer for our M1942 jump uniform, or paratroopers uniform. So this can be a hard color to get right, there's different variations. So we're gonna be just using some basic mix mixtures, starting firstly with AK Interactive's Gen 3 Canvas. So these are from their new range, these are fantastic acrylic paints. So anything kind of like a canvas color, um, you could also use something maybe like English Uniform if you're using Phileo for this, if you wished. It's slightly warmer you. I'm also going to take some uh, Phileo model color khaki. And again, this is going to be our mid-tone to kind of create some uh, medium highlights before we start going into hard highlighting later on in this video. So now I'm going to make, mix these up about 50-50 with our AK canvas and Phileo khaki. You can mix these just fine. They won't react in any weird, weird ways. They're both acrylic. 
And I'm just going to mix this up to a shade I'm happy with. Again, looking at reference material. I'm also being kind of inspired by the aesthetic of Band of Brothers. They are using like a filter on their cameras to make things look darker and grainy. So I'm going to actually desaturate these quite a bit. And to do that, I'm just going to take some AK Gentry US Olive Drab Uniform Base. And I'm just going to mix a small amount of this colour. It's, qu it's quite strong shade, so just a little dab, and I'm going to mix that into our mixture here. And that's just going to impart that kind of green, grainy, um, desaturated colour. And I've just tinned it down with just a drop of AK Gen 3 thinner, which is our acrylic thinner. And I'm just going to build this over a layer or two. So I'm using a number one brush here actually from Winsor & Newton Cotton and I'm just going to slowly start building up this colour. And um, the trick with this, because we're going to be using a lot of semi-transparent colours, it does take a layer or two. So just be a little bit patient and let the figure paint itself. Try not to go too ham with this, don't put too much paint on your brush or you will just have a bad time. So for his helmet, I'm just going to take some AK Gentry Olive Drab. You can use any kind of Olive Drab or Vallejo um, Brown Violet or Violet Brown, which is just ba a perfect colour for like basing helmets. I'm not going to get too caught up in this because we're going to be putting um, more detail here, but we're just going to block that in with a bit of Olive Drab. So moving back to our wet palette. So we're going back to our, our base mixture and I'm going to add a little bit more khaki and this is going to be our first highlight colour. So I'm just pulling some of the original mixture away and then just taking some more Vallejo Khaki to mix into that. And that's going to be our first highlight. So I'm going to start focusing this really on the top of the creases. I'm also going to use this colour to frame the cut of his jacket and his trousers. So around pockets, around the seams. I'm actually going to really fill in quite a bit of both his trousers and his, jump and, and his smock with this colour. I've switched down to a number zero brush here that's got a nice point on it. I'm just going to slowly work my way through this. It is a bit laborious, so the best thing to do is maybe have a podcast or something going on, just so you have a bit of company as you're painting, and it just uh, help you relax and not speed through it too much. So as you can see here, I'm really just sketching in um, basic outlines. I'm not being too precious about it. I'm just trying to um, pick out where I think some of the highlights will go because we're going to refine this with subsequent layers later on. So now we're going back to our wet palette and I'm going to take some Flejo model color sunny skin tone. So this is really going to saturate and push the highlights. So we have to be a little bit aware of this. Um, again, I want this to be a little bit desaturated as a, an aesthetic choice. So I'll be a little bit careful how much I put in. So I'm just going to start by taking our previous highlight color here and just mixing a small amount of sunny skin tone in. And if it's too bright, you can also mix some of the darker color back into it. And again, just a small amount on my brush, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to start sketching again the more defined detail. So again, I always tend to go and start working on the pockets first. It just gives me an idea what I want to do. And I'm going to start working on seams, his collar, and bit by bit, it's just going to start help pop out some of these details.
So again, just focusing on the tops of creases. Um, any area that's really raised or pronounced will get some of this color. And you can see how it's starting to pop a little bit more now. We're beginning to see a little bit more of the definition. There's a lot of folds that are really nicely sculpted into this figure. So this gives us a lot of indication where to put our highlights. So now with our basic highlighting done, now we're going to start adding some shadow. And the shadow is really going to help define a lot of these details. And for that, we're going to take some Flejo model color German camo black brown. So this is my go-to for adding shade. This is just a perfect, um, rich black brown. And that's going to take a little bit of our khaki or your canvas color, doesn't really matter. Mix a little bit of it into your black brown. And as you can see here, I'm going to make a really deep, in intense color here that has a, a hint of our base color here. And there's a drop or two of thinner in just to help thin this down so it flows a bit nicely and just mix it entirely. So this is a little bit more involved, again going down to our number zero brush here, again a nice fine tip brush is essential for this. And I'm going to start tracing and undercutting, I think that's the correct term I really want to use, I'm undercutting details. So if I see a seam line or an area that's got like a fold and an overhang, I'm going to frame it, I'm going to paint in underneath the overhang to create shadow. Or in a deep crease, you'll see me here now in a few moments, I will um, paint into the, the depth of that crease. And again, it just helps create that three-dimensional view. Now this step does take time because I'm, I'm basically going around all these web gear as well, either side of the webbing, to put two dark lines either side just to create a shadow where the uh, webbing is sitting on his body. So it does take a little bit of time. So I'm taking again some of our AK, in this case SEC number 15 of drab. So this is meant to be like a reinforced M42 jump jacket or a jump smock. So the, a lot of the pockets actually had reinforcing material sewn onto it by the by the paratroopers. I'm just going to paint around the bottom of the each of his um, tie pockets here, and just paint it with that olive drab color. Again, whichever olive drab you have at hand is more than adequate. Now I make a mistake here. I also do his torso pockets here or his chest pockets, and that's a mistake uh, from the, um, the samples I was looking at online. These ones aren't reinforced, so I'm going to have to come back in later on and undo this mistake. So just be aware of that. So now we're moving on to his web gear. Now this is kind of tricky in the sense that we have to make it look a little bit different to the uniform but it's also a very similar shade so i'm just taking up a bit of a mixture here of flejo khaki and a small amount of flejo russian uniform i'm going to mix them up in a ratio that gives me a slightly green u and that's going to be my used for my belt and my suspenders for his webbing and then for his pouches first aid pouches and canteen and, and the like i'm just going to take some straight up flejo khaki Now you can use any kind of mixture you want here, um, as long as it's still in that kind of khaki tone. So you can add a bit more green to it, you can make it slightly lighter, it's really up to you. 
but I would recommend just doing slightly different tonal variations on your wet palettes just to make the equipment a little bit different in you and saturation to his uh, uniform, otherwise it all gets lost. Now for the Musette bag here, or Musette bag should I say, I'm going to take again some of our Filejo khaki and some Filejo Russian uniform, mixing it roughly 50-50. I'm going for a more greenish hue here, and this is just going to be the base colour again for our Musette bag. So moving on to his utility pouch, I believe, we're just going to take some straight off AK um, Olive um, Uniform, or US Olive Uniform Base is the full title. I have all the paints listed in the description, so um, you can go down and check which colours I'm using. I'm just using a straight up, again, it's this lovely kind of green canvasy look. Another thing I want to draw your attention to, which I've just seen, and I must not have filmed it, is you'll see that I've painted in the reinforcing pads on his knee, just using um, AK um, Olive Drab. I've also gone in and very carefully painted the pads on his shoulders for his webbing with some English uniform, so they had felt pads to kind of take the, the strain off their shoulders from their web gear and that's just picked out with a little bit of English uniform and then later on we'll just mix some of our khaki into the English uniform for highlights. So it's just a little bit hard to capture it on camera. And again going back to our AK all up drab, we're just going to paint in his Mark II grenade I believe it is, um, his fragmentation grenade. So now I'm going to back into our highlights. So we're going to, again, it's good to keep an eye on what colors you're using so you don't mix them up. So we're going back to our khaki and the Russian uniform mixture. And I'm just going to push a little bit more khaki into the mixture. And that's going to be our highlight color for his belt and suspenders. And I'm just going to focus this into kind of the central parts of each strap. I'm going to leave some of the darker color either side of it. And it just helps draw the attention of it. So just to pick out the camo net on his helmet, I'm just going to take some Filejo German Camo Beige and I'm going to dry brush this onto the helmet quite lightly. I've removed most, about the, most of the paint onto a piece of cardboard. So the trick is don't use kitchen roll or paper towel for doing your dry brush. Actually just use um, um, a, an old tile or um, a piece of cardboard. It just stops the effect from being chalky. So now we're going back to our utility pouch or whatever type of pouch this is. And again, we're going back to our original mixture of um, AK US um, olive drab or yeah, olive drab base for their uniform. And I'm just going to add in, in a little bit of khaki, and that's going to be our base highlight. And I'm just going to do some highlights on the seams and raised detail as well as on some of the larger creases, just to help frame and define some of this detail here. And I'm also going to give his pouches a quick highlight. So I didn't want to oversaturate this. Um, so I'm actually just going to mix in a little bit of Filejo Iraqi sand into our um, khaki here. Just a small amount. And that's going to be our, our highlight. Again, I don't want to make these too bright. Just a slightly muted highlight will do a lot just to sell this. So moving on to the hessian on his helmet, or the, the camo netting. So I'm going to take some Filet English uniform that's just been tinned down again with a drop or two of 
um, AK Interactive uh, acrylic thinner. And I'm also going to take some Flejo Camo Beige, and that's just going to be used for some of the other uh, pieces here of Hessian. So now I'm going to start working on these boots, so the, the world famous jump boots. So how I like to do my kind of red letter is I like to take some Flejo Flat Brown, and then take a small amount, or a decent dollop really, of Flejo Red Leather. No more than 50-50 mixture, but if it's too bright or too dark for you, add either of the colours. But again, there's a quick look at your um, references. And then I really want to like pull like the depth into that, that, that colour by just taking a little bit of German Camo Brown and just mixing it in. And that's going to be our base layer. And yes, you did see me use the water in my wet palette to thin down my paints. I'm not too precious about that. You may want to use clean water or thinner. It's up to you. Um, I don't have any issue either way when I do it this way. It's never come back to bite me. And just moving down to a number two brush, I'm just going to uh, block in his boots. So again, this is a little bit of an infob step to get the leather to look correct, but um, it does work once you kind of take your time and build up the highlights. I'm also going to take this colour and base coat his Rifle M1 or M1 Garand. We're going to work our, our magic on this in a little bit too, just to create a very simple wood grain effect. But again, this is a perfect kind of rich shade for a base coat for the nice um, wooden stocks of these rifles. So now our first highlight, we're going back to our red leather. And again, I just pick out a small edge of the uh, darker colour and then just mix some of the lighter shade into it. And that becomes our first highlight colour. And the nice thing about doing it this way is I have the preceding um, layer still intact, so I've had to come back and fix things I can. So this looks a bit messy, but really what I'm doing here is like I'm focusing this colour on the tops of the creases, any raised details, the toe of the boot and the heel of the boot. I've also come in, or I will come in, with a little bit of German grey to paint in the soles of these boots, which was a little bit hard to fill them, but I'll just make you aware of that now. And I just slowly work my way around, just punching this in bit by bit. Also taking the same colour and just going in lateral motions, I'm going to start applying this to the rifle stock. And this is going to start imparting a small bit of uh, wood grain that will slowly build up with highlights as we go. So going back to our wet palette, I'm going to even punch in a little bit more red leather into this highlight mix that we have. And as the shading gets higher and higher, we become more and more disciplined too. So when you go higher in shade and in highlight, we use less and less. So smaller, smaller areas. So here we go on the stock of the rifle, and I'm just again, just going in lateral motions, trying to create a bit of a wood grain effect. Again, a nice fine um, bristled and tipped brush is essential for this. And we just pull in one direction or the other, and we just create some nice horizontal lines here, and that's gonna help sell the idea of it being um, a wooden stock. So I'm pushing the highlight even further now by adding some filet of sunny skin tone. Now this is really going to oversaturate this, so we have to be a little bit careful. Um, if it's too much, add a little bit of the darker colours in, as you can see me doing here, because I feel it's a bit too bright. So I do add some of our pre uh, preceding darker shades in. And I kind of first tested out here on the rifle stock, and again, just being a bit careful just to apply into certain sections of the rifle, again, just to create a bit of a wood grain effect. So there's a bit of back and forth. And so I work in small areas partly just to see how it looks. So if I do make a mistake, I can go back and quickly fix it. Uh, or, or um, And this gives me an idea of what I'm going to do. 
So with this really light color, I'm going to focus this really on the, the toes of these boots and the heels. Any area I feel where like the leather might wear kind of to that kind of sheen that you see in uh, worn leather. And bear in mind, though the 101st only went into action for the first time in Normandy, they were extensively drilled in England before they dropped. So you know, their equipment, especially their boots after all the force marches they were made to do in England for training, would surely have worn down their drum boots. So now we're moving for the metallics. So I do a non-metallic effect on this rifle, and it's a very simple uh, two-step uh, method that I use. I just do a base coat of Vallejo German Grey. And once that's dry, I just do an edge highlight of Vallejo Neutral Grey. And I think that creates a really simple um, effect, but also kind of mimics the parkerized uh, metalwork that you see on US rifles from this era. Also, I'm just going to take our darker leather mixture that we used for basing the boots. I just added in a little bit more of our camo black brown, and that's going to be our base layer for the rifle sling. Which, if you're curious, I just made out of some Tamiya tape that is super glued in place. Nothing too fancy, it's not 100% accurate, but it's nicer to have the sling than not to. And then what I do is I just take one of her highlight colours by just adding some red leather into it. And then I just start pulling laterally again across the sling, like in a, in a slashing motion. And that creates a nice worn leather effect. And I'll also run it along the edge of the sling, again just to create a nice worn leather effect. So just to base coat the iconic Screaming Eagle insignia of the 101st Airborne, I'm just going to take some Vallejo German Grey that I've thinned down ever so slightly. And once it's dry, I'm going to take some Vallejo model colour Ghost Grey, which is a lovely um, off-white grey. I don't want to go straight white because it'd be a bit too much. This looks like a nice embroidery um, patch, and I've just carefully cut that in. And then just for the beak of the eagle, I just taken some Citadel Averland Sunset, which is a nice kind of ochre yellow, so it's not too bright. Again, I want it to be subdued. It's very easy to go overboard if you use flat white or flat yellow for these. So going back to the reinforcing pads or the um, material on his knees. So I based this in with just a bit of um, olive drab. And I just took a little bit of German camo beige from Vallejo, and that's my basic highlight. And I'm just going to edge along the tops of the creases, and I won't really push the highlight any further on these items. So for all the uh, belt buckles and um, buckles for his webbing, I'm just going to take some Flejo German Camo Black Brown and using a double zero brush here, I'm going to very carefully cut these in. So it's been quite careful just to cut in that detail. There's a lot of belt buckles and buttons on this uniform, so it does take a bit of time. So again, a nice like double zero brush with a really fine point will make life very easy for you. And with that, our paratrooper is ready to drop into Normandy. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. This was a lot of fun to work on. Um, some really interesting challenges to create a, a nice desaturated, yet somewhat vibrant colour, you know, to make it look interesting and pop. So this was a lot of fun, and I hope it gives you some ideas for your own paratrooper models. And I also want to say a big thank you to Diamond O Models for sending me some of their samples to work on. Absolutely fantastic uh, figures. And I would strongly recommend you guys checking out uh, their website just to see what other, they have other figures in their range. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. So a link in the video description. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video where we start painting up some more Normandy themed figures. I've been Shane and I'll catch you in the next one.